Holy sh**. Look at this. Oh, whoa. Interesting. Oh, there's a glitter of bad holy Oh, yeah. Holy Find bits and pieces? Well, the case is cracked. Oh, really? Yeah, look at this. Hey-ho, Keegan the Vlog here. Welcome back to TR3 Wrench Time, and today we are finally getting to the transmission, the mystery of the transmission. So, in episode one, my dad told a story about driving to work and, and this transmission failing. Power from the engine was not getting to the drive wheels. What we found out today was that uh, third gear doesn't even work. However, fourth gear appears to be working. So, with fourth gear engaged, Turning the input shaft turns the output shaft. No other gear can can we make that work. So now there's 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 something wrong inside this transmission. Um, third, yeah, third third doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah, re reverse does not work. Reverse doesn't work either. So. So there is something definitely wrong inside this transmission, um, and it's not clutch related, it's, it's in the transmission. Not knowing a ton about transmissions, uh, but having some recent experience with the DeLorean transmission, my gut tells me that there is, there is a lot of, of lateral play in here that seems, seems incorrect. Um, we're gonna have to do some measuring. We can't quite see the shaft on the bottom, so there might be something really obvious going on once we get, once we pull the top shaft out and then and then see what's going on down below. Um, so this, like I said, this looks fine. One-to-one uh, -one seems to be fine. Uh, in, engaging any of the other forward gears or reverse for that matter is, is not producing uh, Turning the input shaft is not turning the output shaft. So, um, so let's get into it. Andy, this was the set screw that they were talking about having to drill out in that document you sent me before, wasn't it? Uh, I don't this is coming out nice. Look at that. It's cool. Oh yeah, there was a whole thing about the speed on your drive yep. and the one that I think says it because otherwise you destroy it. Good, good to know. Okay, guess we're not gonna take the blades off. Uh you want me to uh yeah. holy sh look at this! Oh whoa. interesting. interesting. Oh there's a glitter of bad holy sh Oh yeah, holy sh find bits and pieces. Well the case is cracked. Oh really? Yeah, look at this. Right there. Look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Uh, well, that's certainly interesting. I think we might be getting a new transmission. All right, hey, we're back. To Day two with the transmission. Uh, just finished painting a couple pieces on the uh, on the suspension. Okay, so let me show you what we've got going on here. This is the speedometer drive, and it is seized in there really good. Um, we thought maybe we were missing something as far as something holding it in. We're not. It's just one set screw. We got the set screw out, and this is supposed to just just slide out, but it's not just sliding out. Um, we thought maybe it was threaded in, it's not threaded in, and came across at least one other person online that has found this problem and cursed about it. So we have used the Jim Vine Special Sauce, which is the 50% mixture of acetone and automatic transmission fluid, 
because we got a little bit of lift on it. So hopefully that got down in there to penetrate it a little bit. And I'm just going to bang and pry on it and see if I can get this thing out. See, here's a sketch that Andy made of, of what's going on here. So here is the input shaft or the clutch shaft, I guess you could call it. At this point here, this shaft is decoupled from the output shaft and there this is gear driven so nothing along this shaft is turning the uh the output of the transmission so the only time we get uh turning of the output side of the transmission is in fourth gear and that's when these two pieces here are coupled and that is a direct one-to-one -one drive so there's probably something really wrong down below we haven't seen yet. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue to take it apart. Uh, the other thing we found is the case is broken here. Um, and I've gotta believe that that is gonna allow gear oil to leak. I, I can't see how that seals in that condition. So I don't think we can use this transmission is really what it boils down to. Uh, it's just at this point, morbid curiosity. Uh, to see the destruction that is inside at the bottom of this case that we're, we're going to find. The situation we've got going, I just paid a bunch of money to have the starter rebuilt for this, and this is a TR4 transmission. The bell housing is different on the TR4. You see this big indentation here. So the way the starter works from TR4 onwards is, is it, it actually pulls in instead of pushes out. So there's kind of a long shaft that goes in there and an earlier model transmission has a bell housing that won't fit. Now it is possible that we can use this bell housing and take the internals out of one of those transmissions and put it in here, but then why are we buying a, a completely rebuilt transmission if we're just going to take it apart? So um, a lot of perturbations going on here and nothing on this project has been particularly easy except for maybe the frame. Um, so, you know, we're learning a lot and this car is going to be a great driver when we're done with it. We just have to get through some of the hard parts here. So I really, really, really want to get building on this frame. I am super excited to make this thing just a roller again. So um, let's, uh, let's get into it, back into it. Let's hope this part is still available anyway. But I think this was the important part we got out without mangling it. So uh, we've got the speedometer drive. So we can continue. Okay, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, this nut this did not even hit the clutch when I when I took it off of of this shaft, and that looks like it's in pretty rough shape. Just a friendly reminder that we have decided we are not reusing this transmission. We are going to source another one. If you are planning to reuse your transmission, don't take it apart like this. Okay, so during all of that, chunks, chunks are falling out from in here. So I suspect we're gonna see some pretty decent carnage when we get this input shaft, uh, I'm sorry, this output shaft um, out. Allow myself to introduce myself.
There's chunks, chunks, chunks in there. This appears to be a spacer. Okay, we got the uh, shafts out of the TR4 transmission for the TR3, and uh, a couple of springs and ball bearings came out. I think those were part of the shafts that we just, uh, we dislodged. I don't think that was actually broken before, but this was at the bottom of the case, and I mean, it's a spacer of some sort, so uh, that could very easily have prevented the uh, the input shaft, this bottom shaft here, from being engaged. So that may have been the problem. There's, I don't know if you can tell by the, on the camera, but the the remainder of the gear oil is is very metallic-y, it's very silvery. Um, so this this transmission has done, there's a lot, a lot of little little chunks and stuff inside here. So this thing has, this thing has a lot of internal damage on the gears and whatnot, so. Well, there you have it. This transmission is pretty much done. So let me show you the good and the bad. There's not much good. Um, Okay, first of all, this is all of the little metal chunks that came out of the bottom of the transmission, including this. This, uh, this metal spacer was, was in the bottom of the transmission, and clearly there's a big chunk of it missing. Um, so I suspect that that affected the geometry of the, um, the primary shaft engaging the input shaft. Uh, and as evidence, you can see the the teeth on the drive gear of this shaft really chewed up. So, um, so this gear is definitely toast. Uh, the rest of that shaft doesn't look great, but there are chunks all over the inside of this transmission from. Um, from that so no surprise that it only worked in fourth gear the story my dad told if he if he was actually in fourth gear that entire time which would make technical sense because that would eliminate this shaft from the equation and if that shaft wasn't turning then one two three in reverse would not work so um the other thing that is unfortunate is the case right here. We saw one of the, the bolt that actually goes in here had a giant washer on it. So this was, this was a known issue or this was put together like that. And, and the piece is right here and the piece we still have. So I guess it's possible we could find some somebody that can, can TIG weld that back on, except that's part of the mating surface and I don't see how this transmission doesn't leak gear oil out of that corner um, that being the case and look at my fingers look at the the metallic uh, the metallic look of the oil that that is coming out of this thing I mean it's it's almost glitter so I don't know how much effort and money to put into this thing when uh, there are several options for completely rebuilt transmissions available online for somewhere around $1,000. So I think we could easily spend half that on parts 
to uh, put this back together, and it would probably take me days worth of, of effort to put this thing back together, which I'm not gonna have in the, in the not too distant future. Anyway, I think this transmission is finished. The good bits will keep for spares for the future, but uh, I don't think we are gonna be putting this transmission back into service. And to make matters a little bit more complicated, we did spend a little bit of money and have the starter rebuilt it's a TR4 starter. This is a TR4 transmission, and the bell housings are different from the early TR3s. So, uh, so we're either going to have to get another TR4 transmission or get a TR3 transmission and a new slash um, rebuilt TR3 starter. So, eh, is what it is. All right, that's going to do it for the transmission mystery. I think this one's too far gone to save. But, uh, hey, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time on TR3 Wrench Time.